Good morning and welcome to worship. We are so glad that you're with us today. Today, um, we continue our journey through the season of Epiphany as we celebrate the coming of the light. Today, there's a couple things, I, I have just a couple announcements I have. One is on February 14th, we will, um, I think, tentatively be going back to in-person worship, but we will continue Facebook Live. We have not talked about time frames or anything like that, so hopefully next week we can give you uh, what time the worship's going to be at the churches and on Facebook. And today we have a special, um, a special person is celebrating their birthday on Wednesday. I want to make sure I'm getting this right. She will be 88 years old, and she is someone that we know and love, and it's Harriet Miller, the organist from Christ Church and Grove Avenue. We are so blessed to have her uh, with us, and if you have the opportunity, I think we sent out an email at the churches uh, to send Harriet a birthday card. And today she's going to be playing a special selection for the prelude, and it's from, it's Mozart, because Wednesday is also Mozart's birthday. So Harriet and Mozart, they belong together. So uh, if you have an opportunity, please extend your uh, well wishes to Harriet. The other thing that's happening today that's pretty exciting Karen Walker, who is the organist, pianist, choir director at Homestead, is joining us, and you'll hear her number during our prayer time. So we are blessed to have um, such wonderful, talented musicians, and Denise Baldwin from Grove Avenue uh, puts this all together. She records it and makes sure it, um, it comes through okay. And we've got Karen here running the sound today. So we are blessed in many ways. We're going to start the morning. Oh, I have to tell you, I've been, I've been watching some of our old ones. And um, they kind of brought, well, no, they did bring tears to my eyes. But it was really uh, wonderful. And I watched the last one that John and I did. And I was saying good morning to everybody. Like, good morning, Mary Ritz and Becky Brubaker and, and Les and Sue and Cindy Slack and and I said, oh, they're popping up left and right. And John went, pop, 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 pop. <laughs> I'm sorry that I have not had the same level of craziness uh, since then. Uh, but it all is good and all is well. So we're going to uh, move into worship and Harriet's going to be playing Ave Verum the Mozart piece, and this is in honor of Mozart's birthday and in recognition of Harriet's birthday. So please prepare your hearts to worship God.
Happy birthday, Harriet. Happy birthday, Mozart. And happy birthday to Jean Fritz. She's going to be a hundred tomorrow. It's Bev Rager's mother, and she's in Laurel View Village. So if you want to shower her with a card also, that would be wonderful. We are so blessed. Jesus calls us to leave our comfortable ways and to venture forth with him. But so often we're afraid. And it's just easier to stay where we are bound to our old familiar habits. Jesus knows our fears and our concerns and he offers us hope and healing. May Jesus open our hearts and teach us his ways. Let us pray. Oh God, it is in you that we live and move and have our being. You created us for yourself so that our hearts are restless until we find rest in you. Grant us purity of heart and strength of purpose so that nothing or no one will prevent us from knowing your will and no weakness will keep us from doing your will. In your light, may we see life clearly and in your service, May we find the perfect freedom that comes only from you. This we ask in the name of Jesus, our Savior, our brother, our friend. Amen. Our first scripture reading today um, is by Lois Graham from Grove Avenue. A reading from Psalm 62, verses 5 through 12. Oh, I must find rest in God only, because my hope comes from him. Only God is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold. I will not be shaken. My deliverance and glory depend on God. God is my strong rock. My refuge is in God. All you people, trust in him at all times. Pour out your hearts before him. God is our refuge, Selah. Human beings are nothing but a breath. Human beings are nothing but lies. They don't even register on a scale. Taken all together, they are lighter than a breath. Don't trust in violence. Don't set false hopes in robbery. When wealth bears fruit, don't set your heart on it. God has spoken one thing, make it two things, that I myself have heard. That strength belongs to God and faithful love comes from you, my Lord, and that you will repay everyone according to their deeds. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our opening hymn is Shout to the Lord.
nothing compares to the promise we have in Jesus. Amen. Hey, for the last couple months, we've been talking about Emmanuel, God with us. And we've been invited to come and endure him at the manger. And we've heard John the Baptist crying in the wilderness. And this in this season of Epiphany, we're exploring the ministry of Jesus. Well, here's a little background about today's text. The time was right. The time was right for Jesus to begin his public ministry. And so he leaves Nazareth and he heads to Galilee, which was a heathen place. And it had a lot of non-Jewish people there. Today's text invites us to change our lives and to believe in Jesus. And we're encouraged to look at what does it mean to us personally and collectively if we accept Jesus' invitation to follow him. So we're headed for the lake shore. We're gonna find four fishermen who are busy minding their own business. And Jesus comes along and says, follow me. They leave their old life behind and the rest is history. So let's hear how it all happened. Matthew, Mark, Matthew, <laughs> Mark chapter one, verses one through 14, and I'm reading from the NIV Bible. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee, proclaiming the good news. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake. For they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once, they left their nets and followed him. When he had gone a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat, preparing their nets. Without delay, he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, this lesson marks a transition. John the Baptist's ministry was over and Jesus' ministry is beginning. And Jesus is roaming the villages, the hills and the valleys of Galilee with the simple message. Now, now is the time. Here comes God's kingdom. Change your hearts, change your lives, and trust in the good news. You know, at first glance, that sounds exactly to what John said. They both emphasize changing hearts and lives, but it's for different reasons. John called people to change, to repent, to prepare for the coming of the Messiah, for the coming of Jesus. Jesus is calling people to repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. The waiting is over. God has a new call on this world. That's what this scripture is about, hearing God's call, discerning God's call. Well, the Old Testament reading today, which we did not use, is the story of Jonah. Chapter 3. Now, you all know the story. The Lord came to Jonah saying, go now at once. And Jonah saying, who, me? You gotta be kidding. You're not talking to me, are you, Lord? You want me to go where? Nivea? Oh, no, not likely, not today, not ever. You know, that's not a very nice place, Lord. They're evil. They have strange customs and beliefs. You want me to help them? No thanks. And you know what Jonah did? He fled in the opposite direction, desperate to get away from God. And it wasn't until he encountered the storm, the gigantic fish, and he was spit out on the shore that he finally answered God's call and he went to Nivea and the people changed their ways and the city was saved. So as Jesus starts his ministry, he calls Simon and Andrew and James and John, and he says to them, follow me, and I will send you out to fish for people. And immediately they followed. They weren't like Jonah, 
Immediately they left what they were doing and they followed him. Well, how about us? Can we hear God's call? Can we discern what God is calling us to do? Individually and collectively as a church and as a charge. Doesn't matter who we are. Doesn't matter where we've been. It doesn't matter if we're old or young. It doesn't matter how many skills or, edu or how much education we have. The only thing that matters is that we're willing, willing to follow. Now, some of us are reluctant like Jonah, and we have a whole list of excuses why we don't do what God calls us to do. But like Jonah, I believe eventually we will answer the call. Others are eager, and they jump right in, and they follow immediately. So which type are you? You know what? It doesn't matter. What does matter is that we follow. Now, sometimes we've heard Jesus' words so often that we miss how terribly unsettling they are. Calling people to live dramatically different lives. You know, journeying with Jesus is not always easy to follow wherever he leads. And as I uh, was writing this, I thought of my, my friends Rich and Lulu in Guatemala. Rich gave up everything in Johnstown and went to Nicaragua, and now he's in, in Guatemala. And look what happened along the way. He met Lulu, and now he has a partner. It's pretty wonderful. So if we're willing to follow, if we're willing to answer the call and follow, our lives will never be the same. You know, Jesus messes with our lives. He changes the status quo. He changes what we expect. It's no longer business as usual. He gives us new eyes to see the world differently. He gives us new ears so that we hear differently. And he gives us a new heart that enables us to love as God loves. Jesus gives new meaning to our life and he gives us new priorities. But first, before he does all that, he shakes things up. Things have to give. Things have to change. And look who Jesus called to, to work for, with him. Fishermen, fishermen, rough fishermen, average, ordinary. Hmm, kind of sounds like us, doesn't it? Each of us, like the ones that Jesus called personally, have their own personality, own strengths, own weaknesses. And Jesus just gathers that all together, all those varied gifts to make the body, his body, the body of Christ, that he needs to do his job, to do his work. And what do they have in common? They were willing to answer the call, and they were willing to follow. So what does all this mean to us today? It means Jesus calls ordinary people, calls ordinary people to follow him and to proclaim the message of God's love and mercy and forgiveness. And we have to remember that you don't need to know everything you don't need to have any kind of special skills or abilities. Jesus chooses, and he just says, follow me. What he's saying is, I will show you. I will teach you. I will give you what you need to do to do the job I've called you to do. And that's exactly what he does. He is constantly showing us, teaching us, transforming us. And we are growing and developing as Christians. Our journey never ends. Unfortunately, some people miss the point and they think they have to have it all together. They have to know all the answers before they can be effective witnesses for Jesus Christ. Well, I got to tell you, God doesn't necessarily choose those who are particularly gifted or capable. God calls the unlikely. 
fishermen like Simon and Andrew, James and John, pastors like Carol. And he says, follow me and I will send you out to fish for people. And when Jesus says, follow me, it's not an invitation. It's a command. He doesn't say, would you like to follow me? He says, follow me. He doesn't make it a suggestion. Like, oh, would you like to tag along with me for a while? And, and if we can work together, maybe, maybe then we can build a new kingdom, a new here on earth. We can change things here on earth. No, no. He says, follow me, follow me, and you will find new life. You will change. You will change from the inside out, from the emptiness that's inside you, and you will turn towards the kingdom of heaven. Follow me, don't look back. They're all commands. Turn from the past, look to the future, for your future, our future, is found in Jesus. And when Jesus sp spoke to these disciples, what happened? At once they left their nets and followed him. Without delay, he called them and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed. Eight times in this first chapter of John, you hear the words at once, immediately, right away. It's urgent. The time is now. Why hold back? Why hold on to a failing and doomed world? Turn away. Turn away and don't look back. Why? Because the kingdom of God is near. Life as we used to know it is over. The realm of God has come near and everything is different. Our lives will be more abundant than you can ever imagine. That's the great good news. You know, in the book of Mark, he just cuts to the chase. He tells his story quickly. It's like fast forwarding. He gives us nothing but the highlights. He doesn't give us any sense of inner struggle with those disciples. You know, how they discerned whether they should follow Jesus as they were trying to figure out what their purpose in life is. He leaves out the process completely of discerning, deciding, and choosing. All the stuff that we might want to know. Why does he do that? Maybe. Because in the end, it's not important. The important thing is that Jesus calls us and we answer. How we arrive at following Jesus is not so important. The critical issue is that we do follow. You know, today, Jesus still changes lives for everyone who is willing to answer his call, who walk where he leads, who trust their future to him, who are willing to let go of all the little kingdoms of this earth so that the kingdom of God might rule our lives. I have to tell you, I've heard people who are frustrated because they don't have a better sense of what they're supposed to be about. What's their purpose? What's my purpose in life? How can I find my purpose? We don't need to be anxious about it. We need to get first things first. Give ourselves totally to Jesus. Know him, follow him, love him, listen to him and for him. And in doing so, we'll find what we do best, and that will lead us to what we love best. Everything else falls into place when our focus, our calling, is to belong to Jesus, totally and wholly. It gives us huge freedom to change, to grow, to become the person we were created to be. When we belong to Jesus, we can never predict how our lives are going to unfold or where we'll end up or what we'll be doing. We have freedom, freedom to make mistakes and to start over again. And although our main calling doesn't change, our main calling is following Jesus through our, throughout our lives, it'll be lived out in different ways. 
You know, being a Christian can be hard work. It is hard work. Loving Jesus is pretty easy. I mean, who couldn't love Jesus? Loving Jesus as people, that's another matter. It's not so easy. They can go drive us crazy. But when we live into our calling, following Jesus, we'll remember that by belonging to Jesus and by serving in his name, it's going to be tough at times. There's going to be some tears. There's going to be some sweat and maybe even sometimes some little flecks of our blood. But there's one constant. Everyone who answers the call of Christ is blessed. But part of that blessing is leaving behind things. Did you notice Simon and Andrew left their nets? James and John not only left their nets, they left Zebedee sitting in the boat. We can't follow Jesus unless we're willing to change. To change what's in our hands, to change what's in our hearts, leaving behind the past in order to move into the future with Jesus. Right now, Today, Christ is calling us. Christ is always calling us. His call comes fresh every day. What might you and I need to leave behind in order to be totally available to Jesus, to be changed, to journey with Jesus? Jesus sees us as we are. He loves us and he calls us. And like Simon and Andrew and James and John, once we've actually met Jesus, had a face-to-face -face experience with Jesus, stepping out in faith becomes irresistible. I have to ask you, do you know him? Have you taken that step? Have you made that commitment? Have you answered the call? The kingdom of God is upon us. The time has come and the time is now. Don't wait any longer. Change your ways, change your priorities, and believe the good news. Jesus is here, and every day his outstretched arms are waiting, waiting for us. May walking with Christ be the pursuit of our lifetime. Amen and amen. Our prayer concerns today, if you have not gotten them in, please get them in. I have a, a few that I'd like to highlight beside Harriet's uh, birthday on Wednesday, Jean Fritz's birthday on Monday. And I just want to thank um, God for our musicians and our technical support that make this possible. Pastor Deb and I looked at the uh, Facebook worship that we've been doing since last March, and I the number is amazing. Um, I think it was 50-some because we had it every day of the week in uh, for Holy Week. You know, so we've been doing this a long time, and, and I am so grateful for the technology that we have, the Facebook, the YouTube, the worship by phone. It keeps us connected in the midst of this. The other thing I want to lift up, um, you know, those of us who are over 65, mm. I hate to admit that, um, you know, vaccines are available. And um, I got something um, on a news from the United Methodist Church. One pastor is saying that pastors ought to be encouraging people to get vaccines. So I encourage you uh, to get a vaccine, to, you know, to think about that and to really consider getting a vaccine. I have an appointment this coming Friday to get my first shot. So um, I'm on my road to having my vaccines. The other thing I want to comment about um, is Martin Luther King Day it was this past Monday and I was honored to be part of the uh, celebration here in Johnstown on Zoom. And I know several people from the congregations, Pastor Deb and, uh, and uh, uh, our deacon, Natalie, uh, Natalie was part of planning it. So, um, and right now, uh, Deb and Natalie and I are all taking a, uh, a class for the next several months where we're 
looking at what we believe about uh, how people differ and and how that how that react how we react to that and how that changes how we view the world. So um, this is a good time for all of us to evaluate what's in our hearts as we look at other people and how many judgments we make and how many negative judgments we make about people based on, you know, just initial uh, viewing of someone. So I would ask us to pray about that. Our uh, prayer hymn today is, I am thine, O Lord, and Karen Walker from Homestead is playing it. So prepare your hearts to worship. Oh, it's not Karen, it's Harriet playing. Oh, maybe it's just under Harriet's. That's not Harriet. It's Karen. compassionate God. You know, our comfortable lives convince us that we don't need to follow Jesus. We thank you for finding us and loving us and calling us to be your people. Help our unbelief. And where we are weak, give us strength. And where we falter and hold back, gently bring us forward. And when we fail, Forgive us and grant us courage. Enable us to go to uncomfortable places to bring hope and empower us to proclaim with our lips, but especially with our lives, that the kingdom of love is near, brought by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for the new life that you give to all believers. Help us, help us to love as you love. Make us strong in sharing your love with others. Lord, we pray about those things that hold on to us and also those things that we hold on to. All those things that guide our actions, such as our habits and our values and our loyalties and, and things that we accept without a question. May we love you more than we love these things. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of Jesus, for the good news of Jesus Christ, and for the love that he has for us. May his love 
be rich and real in our hearts. Help us to judge everything by the light of the, cro the cross and by that light walk before you all the days of our lives. Make us what Jesus calls us to be. Make us ones who love deeply, who care so much that they're not afraid, so that they're eager, so that we are eager to bring others to you. Hear our prayers, not only for ourselves, but for those who need your special care. We remember today people who are lonely and who grieve and who are unemployed or underemployed and who are suffering financial distress and those who need healing, body, mind, or soul. We pray for the individuals that have been in situations that are brought before you today. We lift up Jean, who's in a nursing home and has COVID and is alone. And we lift up Stacy's grandson, Brody, who is in Children's Hospital. We pray for his healing and for his family. We lift up Neil and Joan at Laurel View. And we lift up Hillary and Brady and Jim and Steve Schobert and Jim and Jennifer Recker and Reverend Linda Maines. We pray for Jennifer as she... Uh, closes down at Grove Avenue and prepares for her new adventure. And we lift up Grove Avenue's SPRC as, as they select a replacement. And we pray for Linda. And I lift up my dear friend Lois, who lost one of her friends to COVID this week. And I thank you, Lord, for our musicians, For Karen and Denise and Harriet and we'd ask a special blessing upon Harriet for her birthday and upon Jean Fritz and Lord we thank you that uh, we have a way to get together and to worship without being in the church building this past year we have learned so much and we thank you for that opportunity and gracious Lord we lift up um the Stuvers, this week they had medical procedures and uh, good news, good news from them. Thank you, Lord. And we lift up Kayla, who was pregnant, and kids in school that are facing peer, peer pressure. We'd ask for your guidance as those um, who are seeking employment at this time. Lord, we have so much to be thankful for. And help us to focus on our blessings, what we do have, what you have given us, and not what we don't have. We also have unspoken prayers in our hearts that we can't lift aloud. So hear those prayers, Lord. These things we ask in the name of our crucified and risen Savior, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. I just want to say that was Karen Walker playing the prayer hymn. So uh, thank you, Karen. Uh, if you are a member of the CGH Charge, I would ask that you would send your tithes and offerings to the church. And if you are not a member, send it to your home church or send it to an organization that supports the ministry of Jesus Christ. Our going out hymn is Trust and Obey. Bye.
Such a simple message. There's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. I, I love that song. I have to tell you, I wasn't familiar with that song until the winter of 1964. I was 10 years old at a release time Bible school. They put you on a bus from the school and they took you to the Presbyterian church and they did a, a Bible study and you had an hour and they bust you back to the school. And uh, that was our theme for that winter was trust and obey. And um, that's so long ago they had little flannel boards. Do you know, you know what they looked like. I love those things when you got to put them up. But she actually had flannel boards for, for pictures for this trust and obey. Um, so may we remember that. I have to tell you, I'm pretty good at trusting and I'm not so good in the obeying part. I'm a work in progress. So as we leave today, go in peace, secure in the steadfast love of God, rejoicing in the call that Jesus has placed on your life and in the power, the strong power of the Holy Spirit. So go in peace in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. And Harriet is concluding our worship service with blessed Jesus, we are here. May that be our call this week. Jesus, we are here. Well, this is fun. As we prepare to leave worship, I want to add one more prayer request. The fire chief of Oakland, uh, volunteer fire department, died this week. Please keep his friends and families in your prayers. You have a wonderful week. You are loved. God bless. And we will see you next week. <laughs>